If you follow various home lab communities, you'll see anything from a Raspberry Pi to like a home data center with like multiple racks filled with enterprise hardware. So and then you'll see every, anything and everything in between. And so in this video, I'm going to show a smaller build based off of the full network build guide that I recently did. And so it's going to have basically the same network architecture and structure, but it's going to be half the size. It's going to be 8U, just like my 19 inch rack build that I did. But this one is a 10 inch rack build. And I think I've seen like an increase and in uptick in people buying and posting and building out mini racks in their home networks and home labs. And so I, I think like this trend is catching on and it's becoming more popular among home users because you, know, you can fit a lot of functionality in a small form factor. Many PCs are getting powerful enough. You can, you know, you can run like, you know, decent sized applications for a home network type environment and, and do it well. So 52 Pi reached out to me and offered me their DeskPi RackMate T, they originally was going to be T0, but this is going to be the T1, which is the 8U unit. I thought they're going to send me the 4U unit, but I'm glad they sent me the 8U unit because I think, I feel like that's the perfect size for most use cases. So without further ado, here is my 8U DeskPi RackMate build. A couple goals I had in mind with this build. I wanted to recreate the full network build guide that I did in my 19 inch 8U rack in a 10 inch AU rack to show that you can do similar things in a smaller form factor. I also wanted to reuse existing hardware that I already had that was either sponsored or I purchased over the years so that I could save on costs on building something like this out because it can get pretty expensive if you want to do a lot of things with this. And so I limited my purchases just for things I needed for the rack just to get the build complete, such as like shelves or you know, I bought a patch panel and a PDU. Because of the restrictions I put in place for this build, there are a few compromises that I had to make. The biggest one is I don't have a PoE switch small enough to fit into this rack. So I had to make use of PoE injectors or just more power plugs because of my devices, I couldn't use PoE with them. But so I had things spilling out the back, which is messy. And even though you can't see it when you're looking straight on, I kind of tucked it up against the wall there. Uh, so that's not the, the best situation there. I tried to do the best I could with what I had. Another compromise that I had is the network switch only has four two and a half gig interfaces and two 10 gig interfaces, which might sound like plenty for the devices I have in there, but I like having management interfaces for all of my devices, OpenSense, Proxmox, and TrueNAS. I like having dedicated management interfaces that's on their own network. I wasn't able to do that completely like I normally like to do in this build. So that was kind of a compromise since I had fewer network interfaces. They do make switches that have at least 10, 12 ports that I could fit in there if I would purchase additional hardware for that. I also, with the Raspberry Pi that I'm using to power that display, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 5 8 gig, which is way overkill for that purpose. I was trying to use a Pi Zero 2 that I had laying around, which only has you know 500 megs of RAM, 512 megs of RAM, and I can't really install an operating system on there very well and use a web browser to, to do the display. So that's why I just used my Raspberry Pi 5. I was trying to use full page OS, with the Raspberry Pi 2W, which worked fine if you're if I'm doing it in the vertical position, but since I want to do the horizontal position, I couldn't figure out how to get it to rotate. I tried boot parameters and tried disabling GPU acceleration, those sorts of things that seem to interfere with being able to rotate the display from what I've read with full page OS. And I got tired of tinkering around with it. So I was like, I'll just install it on Raspberry Pi 5, you know, Raspberry Pi OS. So that's one thing you could get away with with the cheaper Raspberry Pi less RAM in it if you're going to use it just for that purpose of running uptime Kuma display status on there. Despite those compromises, this 10 inch rack actually has more functionality than the 19 inch full network build guide that I did because it has a NAS in it. Even if it's a real simple one, it's the two bay NAS, but it has that and that status display, which I didn't even have on the bigger build. And so I could have used a mini PC like this Protectly I'm using in here on the 19 inch build and then use that 2U chassis to make a NAS out of it. And then I could you know, achieve similar functionality to this. And I was trying to you know just demonstrate different hardware instead of using a mini PC all the time for that guide to show you can use do-it-yourself hardware with that 2U N100 system. So let's take a quick look at how I have this mini lab set up. It's very similar to the previous build that I did. And in fact, I took the configuration from that full network build guide, the 2025 edition, and imported it into this 
different hardware. That's a great thing about OpenSense. And I remap the interfaces because I only have two in network interfaces, whereas I was using three different network interfaces in the previous guide. So I am using the LAN interface to also throw the VLANs on. It, you can do that if you only have one physical interface. I know there are people that say you can't mix untagged and tagged traffic. You just have to be careful with the firewall rules. I think it's possible. And there might be some other very specific scenarios where there could potentially be some security risks. So you can use that at your discretion, but it allows me to do the same type of configuration where I have LAN as the physical interface and I have three VLANs on top of that interface. And I just remapped them under the assignments page. You can see here, I the parent interface is IGC1, which is the LAN interface here. Okay, and then WAN is the other interface because I'm only using a two port protectly box for this build because it's nice and compact. Fits great in this uh, mini build rack, which is why I chose that hardware. So let's go down to firewall. I'm just going to go down the page. It doesn't really matter where I'm looking in this. Just, I'm just kind of showing you quickly how things are very similar. Uh, if you go to guest network here, you'll see that these, I just have the two basic rules set up on here. The only difference here is I have the user network allowing full access to the LAN network, which is our management network, just so I can access all these interfaces from the wireless because I'm using a different device to do the screen capture. And I just wanted to try out the wireless connection here. And it's just easy for me to do the screen capture that way instead of reworking how I have the jet KVM plugged into my mini lab. So if we go down to services, you'll an ISC V4, you'll see I still have the same DNS configuration here for each of these interfaces. I won't click on them all, but that you can see they're all the same. I even have IPv6 set up exactly the same, but only on the three networks, as I mentioned in the, the prior video, that I don't have enough IPv6 addresses the way I've delegated them to my sub router to be able to give it to every single VLAN. I only had enough to give it to three different networks because the WAN interface has taken the fourth one. But you can see that I have these ranges set up here for IPv6. So all that is the same and it works with this configuration. Okay, next we're gonna move over to the network switch. I'm using a really basic Sedola network switch and you can see the interface is very simple. You go to configure and go to VLANs and I got 802.1Q VLAN and you'll see I have all the VLANs here, 10, 20, and 30 and also the default VLAN of one. You can see which ports I have assigned each of these. The way you do it in this interface is you enter the VLAN ID up here and you type in the name and then you assign the ports that you want and then you click add modify and then it shows up in this table down here so if you want to edit any of these VLANs you have to go to click on one and once you click on one of them you see it updates the information at the top here fills it in with VLAN 10 user network and you can see that these ports belong to that network because as the tagged ports and because I'm using the wireless access point I have the LAN interface yeah, I have like the LAN interface, the wireless access point interface, the Proxmox interface, and, and the uh, TrueNAS interface as well. Pretty similar to what I did in the other network because I'm using different ports, the same VLANs, and so I have different port assignments here. So you can also change the 802.1Q VLAN IDs. Some of these network switches require two steps. I was fortunate in the way I configured this network switch. I don't need to set any of these because all my devices either exist on the default VLAN, which is the management network. So everything is PVID1, but all of the ports that I'm only using the tagged ports or the, you know, I'm, I'm still having the untagged traffic come across those ports for management interfaces or whatever. So I leave everything as the default PVID. Okay, next up we have Proxmox, and you can see my Proxmox server here. I, here's all the stats for it. I'm on the summary page. I'm using the Proxmox server, which is my Go and R86S U4, and it's running the GWN manager up here, which I did in my previous demo. And it's also running Uptime Kuma for that status display, and you can see the resources for this. So I'm, I'm running two different services off this, and both of these services live on the management network. So Nothing interesting here. If I want to, because I made the network settings here, if you look, I made them VLAN aware for these 10 gig interfaces. So I could, on a separate interface, because I have both of my 10 gig interfaces plugged into the network switch, I could, because uh, I'm using one as a management interface, you know, I don't need 10 gigs for that, just to save up, you know, my other ports for other devices, because I have that network switch filled up. Now, the other 10 gig interface here is what I'd probably use for all of the different apps and services that I wanted to run on different VLANs. And so basically if I wanted Uptime Kuma to be on a different VLAN, I would just go to network and I could just pick whichever bridge that I want and I can just put the VLAN tag in here like VLAN 10. 
And so that's pretty simple if I want to assign a app or service to a different network. So there's not too much to show here because it just has these different apps running. So I have the GWM manager, I'll skip over to this one. And you can see this is very similar to the other full network build guide. So if I click on devices, the only difference is I'm, I don't have a grand stream switch in this network rack because I don't have a small one that will fit in there. So I'm just using that Sedola switch. But if I had a grand stream switch, I can manage it in here. And I have this wireless access point up here that I can manage that's on top of that mini rack. So you can see all the different stats here on the dashboard, which is nice to see the different things here. And I'm using a wireless client in here to do this screen capture. So that's why you see some traffic in here for this wireless client that's on the network. And finally, we have a TrueNAS system here, and you can see that I just I threw in two three terabyte drives of some old spinning hard drives that I had laying around, that, and they were low capacity, so I, I don't use them on my main storage pool anymore, but that gave me the opportunity to just to use them as, for example, drives, because I don't care if they fail or not. So you can go over here and go to the storage and devices. As you can see, I have one mirror that's two disk wide and there are three terabyte drives. So you can see the usable space. I have one gig used. And that brings me to the next point is I was going to show how we can use this TrueNAS share. I have a share setup right here for Proxmox. And that's where I can store ISOs and various things like that if I want. And I don't know if you noticed that earlier when I was talking about Proxmox, but I have this TrueNAS NFS share that I added to my Proxmox server. So I can use it for extra storage. So I don't have to waste any space on my Proxmox server because it has less space on it because I'm using higher speed NVMe drives and I'd rather use that space for the actual containers and VMs. So I can put things in here like ISO images. I threw one in here as an example, OpenSense 25.1 DVD image. This storage pool can handle backups from the Proxmox system. You can back up to the TrueNAS box, which is pretty neat. And you can do snippets and CT templates and those sorts of things. You can even run your apps and containers on here, but I turned off that on the storage pool because it's not going to be as fast as doing it off the network, but you can. One thing I want to show real quick is how I have my Raspberry Pi set up for the display to show the status. I have, I created a separate status page on Uptime Kuma with custom CSS that makes these horizontal, all of these services, because normally they're stacked on top of each other and that doesn't work very well for a wide strip display. You can see on here, my screen resolution is not very high for some reason because it won't let me change it. Something weird happened in there, but it doesn't really matter for this purpose. If you go to the screen configuration, you'll see that I'm using that strip panel as a second screen that's that I have it oriented to the right. So basically I drug one of the browser tabs over to this screen and then I made it full screen and then it just worked. I just did this as a quick, simple way to get this working for the purposes of demonstration. You probably wouldn't want to set it up this way because you'd have to come over and potentially drag this over every time you rebooted the system. Ideally, you can just get an operating system like full page OS that works on the Raspberry Pi that can actually orient the screen properly so that you it would just work and you can use touch screen and scroll down if you have a lot of different services you want to look at. But I wasn't able to get that to work at the time of this video without spending like forever on it. So that's basically all I wanted to show for the rundown of the network. So you can see that it's very similar to the full network build guide and the possibilities are basically endless, right? That's the great thing about building out your own home network. You can do all these cool things and make it how you want. I had a lot of fun building out this mini lab and I think 52 Pi for sending me this rack to try out. And I'm hoping to improve this over time and use it to test various configurations and stuff out. Maybe help me do some guides. So until next time, I'm Dustin Casto and I'll see you guys later.